Well, hello, and welcome to the CNL Summit. My name is Jackie Barber, and I'm the Dean of Nursing at Morningside University in Sioux City, Iowa. I'm a member of the CNC Board of Commissioners, and I was fortunate to have the opportunity to serve on the AACN's Essentials Task Force. As you know, the Essentials Core Competency for Professional Nursing Education was released last spring. This document provides the framework for preparing individuals as members of nursing discipline while reflecting expectations of nursing education and applied experience. The Essentials has been built on a strong foundation of nursing as a discipline, the foundation of liberal arts education, and the principles of competency-based education. I will discuss the overview of the Essentials and explain how the CNL competencies aligns with the Essentials, and then review models of nursing education. So looking at the essentials, the essentials is contained, is a document that contains 10 domains that represents the essence of professional nursing, along with expected competencies for each domain. There's a descriptor for each domain that serves as a working definition and provides that contextual statement. In the domains, we have domain one, which is knowledge for nursing practice. We have domain two, person-centered care. Domain three, population health. Domain four, scholarship for nursing discipline. Domain five, quality and safety. Domain six, interprofessional partnerships. Domain seven, systems-based practice. Domain eight, informatics and healthcare technology. Domain nine, professionalism. Domain 10, personal, professional, and leadership development. Along with the domains, there are featured concepts associated with the professional nursing practice that are integrated throughout the essentials. These concepts are clinical judgment, communication, compassionate care, diversity, equity, and inclusion, ethics, evidence-based practice, health policy, and social determinants of health. Each concept serves as a core component of knowledge and facts and skills across multiple situations and contexts within nursing practice. The integration of concepts within this, the competencies and sub-competencies is essential for the application throughout the educational experience. These concepts interrelated and interwoven within the domains and competencies. They serve as a foundation to the student's learning. The domains and competencies exemplify the uniqueness of nursing as a profession and reflects the diversity of practice settings, yet it shares that common language that is understandable across healthcare professions by employers, learners, faculty, and the public. The Essentials was developed in collaboration with nurse educator, practice partners, and nursing colleagues. It serves as a means to help bridge that gap between education and practice. The collective understanding allows all nurses to have this shared vision. It will promote exchange of nursing practice and the experience, and also helps to have a unified voice that represents a nursing profession. The competencies in each domain are designed to be applicable across four spheres of care. We identify these spheres of care to be the first one, disease prevention, promotion of health and well-being. Another sphere is that chronic disease and care, while another is regenerative and restorative care. And the last sphere is hospice, palliative care, supportive care. And all of these are incorporated across the lifespan with diverse patient populations. The essentials also is made up of two levels of practice for each domain and competency. We have level one, which is an entry level professional nursing education and level two, which is advanced level nursing education. So two different levels that we look at. Each domain has sub-competencies that build from level one entry into professional nursing to advanced levels of knowledge and practice. 
However, one thing to point out is that the increase in level is not by adding Bloom's taxonomy, but instead it's a way of looking at it as a description of what the nurse does in that level. Next slide. During the drafting stage of the uh, essentials, the CNC commissioners align the essentials with the current CNL competencies. And we found that the ACN competencies for curricular expectations for clinical nurse leader education, the 2013 document, aligned very well with the essentials. First, the alignment involved a macro view by matching keywords and verbs in the new essentials draft of the level one subcompetencies. And then we repeated the process with the level two subcompetencies. So for example, here, looking at this chart, you will see a description of this in this chart. So here we looked at CNL competency 1.1. If you look at 1.1 CNL competency, it says interpret patterns and trends in quantitative and qualitative data to evaluate outcomes of care with microsystems and compare it to other recognized benchmarks or outcomes, national, regional, and state institutional data. So this actually, this CNL competency aligned with the AACN essentials competency system-based and subcompetency 7.3b. However, it also aligned very well with level two subcompetencies in the essentials. This one CNL competency aligned with the person-centered care 2.7d subcompetency of the essential, scholarship for nursing practice 4.2j subcompetency, and quality of safety 5.1 subcompetency. So this was very um, exciting news for us. We found that at the macro level, it revealed that 23% of the CNL competencies aligned with the essentials level one subcompetencies. However, it also aligned with level two subcompetencies of the, of the new essentials at a 64% So since we found that there was a higher alignment with level two subcompetencies, we conducted a microanalysis. We dug a little bit deeper into the essentials and did some more alignment. And what we found was that the level two subcompetencies of the essentials aligned with the CNL competencies at a 97%. This was very encouraging. So what does this mean? This means that out of the 209 sub-competencies identified in the Essentials Level 2, 202 of the CNL competencies were represented, again, at a 97%. So just again, to recap, 23% of the CNL subcompetencies aligned with or was identified in level one subcompetencies of the essentials. And 64% of the alignment aligned with level two subcompetencies. But when we dug deeper in the microanalysis, it actually revealed that the CNL level, the CNL competencies aligned well with the AACN essentials level two subcompetencies. So during this alignment, CNC found that the CNL roles were also well represented in the, in the example of the alignment. These roles are the clinician, the outcome manager, the client advocate, the educator, the information ma manager, system analyst, risk anticipator, team manager, member of the profession, and lifelong learning. This slide gives you an example of how that was done. So when you look at this in domain one, knowledge for nursing practice, you see that all of these CNL roles are well represented in domain one. We have the clinician, information manager, team manager, member of the profession, lifelong learning. You can see this throughout the other domains on which role identified the best 
within that ACN Essentials. This is just another example of the rest of the domains. So you can see that the roles are well represented throughout the essentials. Okay, that brings us to the point of looking at how is education delivered? We know that we have a way of delivering nursing education that is represented in the essentials, but we also have a way of delivering CNL education. And when we look at these two things, there's two things to remember. Um, nursing programs are held accountable to uphold the ACN essentials, but they're also accountable to uphold the CNL competencies. So when we look at that, we have two things that we're always um, keeping in mind as we develop and deliver curriculum. So as you recall, in the CNL program, the models of care that are the models of educational delivery that we have is Model A, that's master's degree program designed for BSN graduates. Model B, master's programs for BSN graduates that includes post-BSN residencies that awards master's credit. We have a Model C, that's a master's degree program designed for individuals with a bachelor's degree in another discipline. And we have Model D, master's degree program designs for ADN graduates or R and MSN is what we identify a lot of times. We have model E, which is post master certificate program designed for individuals with master's degree in another area of study. So you can see that in the CNL model of education, we have lots of different ways of delivering the same CNL role. And this is true when we look at um, the new essentials. The new essentials has a new way of looking at how we deliver nursing education. The new essentials model is designed to address future changes in higher education. The model still provides that structure across education programs, but it also provides a mechanism to adapt to future changes within nursing education. Again, we currently have the structure of delivering education with multiple degrees and pathways but yet we all prepare nurses for the similar role. For example, we have pathways for pre-licensure nurses in the form of um, pre-licensure to BSN, pre-licensure to MSN, post-licensure forms in the forms of RN to BSN, RN to MSN, RN to DNP, we have post-master certificates, and we have accelerated programs and so forth. This oftentimes becomes confusing to stakeholders regarding what is the difference among the degrees and how the pathway was obtained. As we know, the old essentials was designed around the degree. We had the BSN essentials, the master's essentials, and the DNP essentials. Now, looking at it, the new essentials moved away from the concept of degrees, and now the intent is focused on learning experiences and demonstration of competencies. We already see this approach in higher education. For example, smaller groupings of courses are highly being sought after in the form of micro-credentials or badges without having the person to redo or obtain another degree. So by designing the attainment of competencies with an academic program, employers will have a clear expectation of the knowledge, skills, and skill set that nursing graduates come out with. The new essentials is not prescri prescriptive to the degree offering, and it leaves that up to nursing programs. Nursing programs can decide on the number of courses, credit hours, degrees for various types of specialty roles, that they want to offer, but all nursing programs must prepare students to demonstrate the same competencies. Okay, so going back, let's look at how the essentials education model can be used alongside the CNL program models. For example, if we have a CNL program that represents model A, which is a master's degree program designed for BSN graduates, the program would incorporate the Essentials Level 2 Advanced Nursing Education sub-competencies with specialty role requirements. In this case, the additional required competencies are the CNL competencies, and we've always had to implement the CNL competencies in our CNL program. 
We already established that the CNL competencies align with the ACN's essentials, level two, advanced nursing education. The CNL competency is written at the advanced level. We know that we've already even demonstrated that when we did an alignment. Remember the essentials education model no longer aligns with the degree offering, but a set of competencies one must demonstrate. So in the case of a model A, or model B, or even a model E, nursing, since nursing students already are considered professional nurse, that means they've been educated beyond the associate or diploma degree. They should already demonstrate level two professional nurse competencies. Therefore, as they are expanding their knowledge, skills, and attitudes beyond that professional nursing level, they will now need to demonstrate level two advanced nursing sub-competencies and the CNL competencies. Okay, so another way to look at this is by taking the Model C, which is a master's degree CNL program designed for individuals with baccalaureate degrees in another discipline. In this case, nursing students is not yet a nurse or they are pre-nurse, so they're not so they're not identified as a professional nurse, or they don't quite have their nursing license yet, so they're not a nurse. This nursing student has not demonstrated level one professional nursing education and sub-competencies, and will need to demonstrate these competencies. Furthermore, they also, since they're in a CNL program, they still need to demonstrate the CNL competencies because we are, again, um, being accountable for both sets of competencies. So the CNL demonstrates the CNL competencies and level one, the professional nurse competency in this example for a model C. Remember the CNL competencies are written at the advanced level. It already meets 90% of the level um, two sub competencies of the new essentials. And they are already required for CNL programs to address. So you can really have students, um, depending on the model of education and program delivery, you can have some programs that are addressing level one competencies because that nurse is going to be a new nurse into the profession. And some that who are already nurses in the profession that are actually advancing their nursing education. And then they will also meet the CNL competencies. The essentials model, um, remember, it's more of a guide to how sub-competencies are met within programs and um, what nurses should come out with. If they are not a professional nurse and yet, or yet a nurse, um, they will need to do level one. And then for those who are already a professional nurse and advance in their degree, they will do level two. We realize there's more work to be done as we move the CNL education forward. However, we can start seeing how the CNL competencies can be incorporated seamlessly along with new essentials.